Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do a nice little video walking through how to do instrumental variables regression in a panel framework. So in Stata that's going to be using the XTIV regress command. Uh, so let's take a look. We've got a blank data set here. We need some example panel data. Uh, Stata, uh, as you probably know, has a wide variety of freely available example data sets uh, through its web use command. So web use will call up a data set from the Stata website. Uh, and the particular uh, example we're going to look at here is the PSID extract data set, uh, which is a, a nice little um, portion of the full PSID uh, data set, which is the Panel Study of Income Dynamics. A really rich data set uh, run out of the University of Michigan, longitudinal data, household level data since 1968, year by year by year. Uh, so really, uh, again, a, a rich source of uh, demographic data, labor supply data. Um, and in fact, I'll do a, a video pretty soon on uh, how to access that uh, full, complete data set and get, uh, get the observations that you're looking for. But for our purposes, we just need a panel data set uh, to use as an example here. Uh, and just to take a look here, so we've got our variables over here. Uh, again, these are individual level, pretty much labor supply and demographic uh, uh, variables here. And for the panel framework, what we're looking for here is this uh, cross-sectional identifier, the individual level ID, and then the time period identifier, uh, in this case, just denoted T, right? So if we just remind ourselves what the, kind of the architecture of panel data typically looks like if we browse those two variables on their own, uh, ID and, and time, right? So here we have individual number one appearing in each of the first seven time periods. Individual number two likewise appears in all seven time periods. And we're going to see that all the way down. So this example data set has been uh, pre-balanced for us. So every observation, every individual appears across all seven time periods in our, in our example here. Uh, so remember for our uh, XT uh, prefix commands to work, those cross-sectional time series uh, commands in Stata, we have to make sure Stata knows how, again, the data is organized. So we use that TS set command, and it's the TS set IT. So in this case, the I identifier is ID, and the T identifier, time variable, is just T. So there we have our panel variable. Uh, we know we have our strongly balanced panel time variable uh, t from one to seven. So our our little example uh, regression here, if we did it just without any regard to the panel nature of the data, right, we'd be looking at the log wage as a function of the number of weeks worked per year by individual, kind of the number of uh, units of labor supplied. Uh, and then, uh, just for the sake of the example, we'll add in just one more variable, uh, the number of years of full-time experience on the job. So that's kind of our, our go-to uh, idea of a uh, wage determination model here. Uh, and of course, we recognize we've got several problems here, again, aside from specification. We know we've got to uh, do a, a lot of work there. Uh, but just in terms of the nature of the of the regression here. Uh, because we have panel data, we need to be concerned about that fixed effects issue. That is there a time invariant component of the error term that is correlated with our right-hand side variables. So check out my previous uh, video on running the, the Hausman test, right, to distinguish if there's significant bias in a random effects versus a fixed effects. Uh, and in this particular case, if we ran that, it would tell us that the fixed effects model uh, is going to be the appropriate uh, regression to run. So if we just remind ourselves right, what the issue is, so our, uh, I'll bring out my little pen here. If our regression here, again, log wage as a function of weeks worked and experience, the idea is that our error term, right, is that composite error. So we have our time invariant component, the AI, and the idiosyncratic period by period error, the UIT. And we are concerned here that 
at least one of our x variables is correlated with that AI term. So we use the fixed effects transformation. So of course what that does is it subtracts off the mean over time for each individual. So that demeaning transformation eliminates the AI term. And we are left with just that demeaned idiosyncratic error term. So the problem now we have, so we can check that off the list, doing the fixed effects, solve that problem. But now we need to be concerned about more traditional endogeneity, right? And what we've set ourselves up for here is if we think about a random shock to one's wage, right? So say we have a positive UIT, one individual's wage goes up uh, at a given period of time due to some reason other than number of weeks worked or, or job experience, that very likely is gonna have this reverse causality effect, right? If you offer me a higher wage, I'm probably gonna be willing to supply more labor. My number of weeks worked is gonna go up. That's gonna generate a correlation with the error term, endogeneity bias, even within that fixed effects transformation. So there is our motivation for looking into uh, this instrumental variables regression. Uh, so we're eliminating the AI, then we're instrumenting for that number of weeks worked to deal with the correlation with the UIT. So we have issues with both of those error components. Uh, and the data set here doesn't have a whole lot of options for uh, a suitable instrument. Uh, again, as we know, uh, the main criteria for an instrument is that it has to be exogenous, right? A random shock to wage should not influence this variable that we're choosing. Uh, so we might think a good source uh, would be something like gender, right? So we have this female uh, equal to one dummy variable. So random shock to your wage, highly unlikely to come back and affect uh, an individual's gender. So we say, okay, let's try that, right? So we're gonna run this as an XT IV regress log wage and then just like we do in the the typical uh, IV regress command right we include in parentheses the variable we are instrumenting for in this case weeks equal to the instrument and for example this female dummy variable right? and then we'll add in our uh, experience as well and we're doing this as a fixed effects transformation well you may already see where this is going to go wrong is that while that female dummy variable may be a good choice as an instrument because it is very likely exogenous, it's not a good choice for an instrument because we are using the fixed effects transformation. And as we know, the fixed effects transformation, its whole purpose is to eliminate time invariant errors. Right? It's also going to eliminate all time invariant variables. So the one coefficient we were looking to estimate is not estimated because of that demeaning transformation once we've included that instrument. So our, our pool of potential instruments gets even smaller. So we need to have a variable that is time varying, yet unlikely to be correlated with the error term associated with wage. So one possibility here is another dummy variable, this marital status variable. Um, it does in fact uh, vary over time. People get married, people get divorced. So within the data set, it is not time invariant, so it won't be eliminated. Um, it is also fairly likely to be, over a short time period here, um, exogenous. So you could imagine a random shock to one's wage makes you more or less likely to, uh, uh, to get married or stay married. Um, we'll kind of discount that and assume, okay, it's probably pretty safe to be exogenous. Marital status is, is relatively fixed uh, compared to period by period shocks to your hourly wage. Uh, the other issue is how highly correlated is that instrument to your potentially endogenous regressor, right? So don't forget, it's always a good idea to run that first stage equation, uh, which we can go ahead and do here, uh, kind of disregarding the panel element here, and just run our log, oops, sorry, run our endogenous regressor weeks as a function of marital status and then what would be the other component of the, the instrument, our exogenous or assumed exogenous experience variable. And what we're looking for here is a, a high degree of joint significance. So our R squared, really weak. We do have joint significance here, that F stat 
uh, up above 10, which is you know a rule of thumb you sometimes see. Uh, so this doesn't give us a lot of confidence. We're not covering a lot of that variation, but there is a relationship between the the instrument and our our uh, endogenous variable. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. So let's call back up that XTIV reg and swap out the time invariant potential instrument, female, we saw that didn't work, and put in this time varying marital status. There we have a coefficient estimated. Um, and now the question is, okay, how, how big of a change do we get relative to the fixed effects without controlling for endogeneity, right? So let's go back and rerun that model, right? So this will just be our XT reg, so no IV this time. Log wage, weeks, and experience, comma, FE. And so here we get a positive coefficient, significant at 10%, almost 5%, whereas in the IV, we get a negative coefficient of bigger magnitude, but no significance. So this, I think, is an artifact of that weak instrument problem. Uh, the fact that that R squared was pretty low, the correlation was pretty low, uh, that standard error is going to rise and it's going to be hard to find significance. But the fact that the magnitude and the sign of the coefficient is so different should give us some pause, right? Make us think we may be on the right track here in terms of endogeneity. So for our purposes, uh, how to use the command, what kind of considerations you have to use, uh, to, what you, uh, kind of considerations you have to have in mind when using this uh, XTIV regress, dealing with instrumental variables and panel data. Not a bad little example. I know there's a lot more uh, we have to think about here, but this would at least put you down the right path, right? So I hope you found that helpful, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.